Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris, aka Critter, and this is Critter Moto. Today we're going to be talking about my uh, my pack out, what all I took, and how I packed it for my 21 day Oregon Washington adventure series. Uh, that's live now, and if you haven't seen it, I suggest you go take a look. In fact, why don't you just stop this video right here, head on over, watch all eight episodes of that, and then come on back. I'm just kidding. Stick around and uh, we'll dive right into these bags and, and see how I did my pack out. All right, so let's start up front here. Uh, we'll start with the Fandango tank bag, uh, Giant Loop Fandango tank bag, uh, completely waterproof. And um, it's my, for lack of a better term, my power station. Uh, this is where I will keep all of my devices charged, including the drone. Everything packs nicely in here. And uh, let's take a closer look. I'll see how, I'll show you how I've done that. Okay, so here's my, uh, my tank bag set up, the power station, if you will. As you can see, it's, uh, it's plugged into the USB right there. And uh, this is all connected by my, my switch relay right here. And I can turn it on or off if I want. And anyways, this is the uh, Giant Loop Fandango tank bag. And it is my power station. So we open it up. And I will keep uh, documents, pen, that kind of stuff, boarding passes, that kind of stuff right there. In that nice pouch right there. Uh, I will always keep my headlamp in here uh, just because you never know you may run into uh, may run into camp late at, at night and then we've got the phone and it sits in there and charges on the uh, quad lock mag lock system uh, really been impressed with that so far and then I have lots of extra room here for, you know, if I want to fire a power bar or whatever, but uh, I don't do that anymore because I'll show you later. Uh, new, uh, new backpack system. Uh, anyways, so we take this foam protection out and we have all three batteries for the drone and two batteries for the GoPro, uh, USB, USB port here if I wanted to charge something else. Uh, the controller's charging, and then just some extra cords down here. So everything's all uh, sandwiched in there with the uh, um, sort of styrofoam protective packaging. And yeah, everything's nice and safe in there. Uh, the thing that I like about this is I can, uh, when I stop for, uh, for lunch or a restaurant or whatever, I just simply unzip this and it comes with me. So that's the tank bag. All right, so now that that's done, we'll head down to these uh, pannier pockets here, the giant loop pannier pockets. And in this one here, uh, a little brag, you know, you got to wipe the goggles, got to keep things clean. And I keep my bear spray. So uh, typically around here, um, not so much on the Oregon trip, but uh, typically around here, what I'll do is once I've stopped the bike and uh, I'm about to set up camp, this, this bad boy here goes on my, on my waist. I strap it to the belt, it's got the belt loop. So I've got it on me at all times. Um, just because, you know, the, the bears around here, they're not so bad. Um, they're, they're more inclined to run away, uh, but you just never know. So, you know, an ounce of prevention or however that saying goes. So that's that pen in your pocket. Now on the other side, I have another pen in your pocket on the other side and what I typically carried in here uh, used to be just miscellaneous, more rags, uh, straps, things of that nature. Um, however, uh, if you'll remember in my Oregon Washington adventure series, uh, while I was at the Giant Loop event, um, I got stranded at the gas station with a dead battery. I did have a jump start with me, but I had it in a pannier, uh, one of my Motor Trek panniers, which I'd left at camp. So it wasn't on me. I had it with me, but not on me. So live and learn, lessons learned. I now carry my jump pack, battery pack, in the left side pannier pocket. So that, in that case, if I ever happen to die again, and I'm not really sure why it died that day, because um, it haven't, hasn't done it since. But anyways, again, another ounce of prevention goes a long way. So that sits up there. Uh, along with a few other little um, more rags. Uh, the rags are mainly in there just to uh, sort of cushion it uh, in case I do end up dropping the bike and stuff. So I sort of wrap them up in the rags and, and it stays nice and safe right there. 
All right, now we'll move to the back of the bike. Now, I've had lots of people say, Critter, can you get any more stuff on that bike? Very sarcastically. And uh, you know, the, uh, the short answer would be, uh, yeah. <laughs> I could totally get more stuff on this bike. Um, it looks like a lot, uh, but it's not. In fact, a lot of these bags aren't even full. Um, I've done it this way simply because I like to uh, compartmentalize things. I like to have everything in its spot. And there's a method to my madness, so bear with me. So, in the top one here, uh, I don't have anything strapped on. It's just sitting here for, for the sake of this, this video. Uh, but in the top here... This is my go bag. Um, this has my laptop, it has my books, it has my charging cables, uh, my iPad. And again, it's on top, it's, it's a, in its own separate bag so that when I'm grocery shopping or stepping into a restaurant, I park the bike, I unstrap this guy, I unstrap the tank bag and I go. Everything else stays on the bike, it's all secured. Um, but you know, like SD cards and uh, computers, um, they're hard to replace. Uh, they hold a lot of memories if I haven't uploaded to the cloud yet. And it's stuff that, you know, if it, if it gets stolen, it's gone for good. So that's the top bag, just electronics. Then we're left with this. So on this side here, in this uh, Backroads MacBook uh, drive bag, um, this is where I kept all of my uh, freeze-dried meals, uh, all of my spices and herbs, um, basically all of my food, my oatmeal for the mornings and things. Uh, I like this bag. I got it from Backroad Map Books. Um, it's completely waterproof, uh, but I, I like it because it's bright orange. So when I hang it up in the tree, um, I can always find it again the next morning. It's easy to spot. And... Um, you know, not, not that uh, throughout the course of a night you would forget where you uh, hung your food, but it's nice, you know, you, you get up in the morning and you wake up, you look at the trees and go, yeah, it's still there. So you can see it from a distance. Um, and, and that way you know if, you know, a bear has been around or anything like that. You may not have heard it through the night, but if this is missing, then you know something's happened. Um, the bear shouldn't get this though, because you should be high, hanging this high enough, um, like about 12 feet off the ground. Um, if you're in grizzly country, you probably want to hang it even higher. So in here, I also have a, uh, uh, paracord with a, a monkey's paw fist, not tied to it. And I take that, throw that up over a branch. It comes down, tie it and hoist it up and up we go. So food bag again, compartmentalized. So everything food wise stays in this bag. And when I go grocery shopping, I'll tuck a little things in here. Uh, side note. When I did my Oregon and Washington adventure, I had uh, brought with me um, 12 uh, of those uh, freeze-dried meal, meal packs, and I came home with nine. <laughs> I only used three. So I could have packed way lighter on the food that I took. Um, I just didn't know, you know exactly what it was going to be like for groceries, uh, grocery stops, restaurants, things like that. Um, but, uh, this year when I go, I'll definitely pack less, uh, freeze dried meals and cook more. Now on the other side, we just have this, uh, Amazon find, um, cheapy dry bag. Um, it does its trick too. It does, it works really well as well. Uh, and fairly inexpensive, uh, Wolf Yoke 10, a 10 liter dry bag. Um, and, uh, actually I watched one of, uh, Tim Collins, uh, uh, 40 times around FDA ventures. Now, uh, one of his videos and, uh, he was, had the same bag and I thought, Oh, I'll, I'll give that a shot and checked it out on the Amazon and, uh, it was, you know, decently priced. So I got that. So anyways, let's get to what's inside. So inside this bag are all of my, um, clothes. So socks and underwear, uh, some t-shirts. And then my toiletries, uh, you know, toilet paper, uh, face wipes, uh, pit stick, uh, bar soap, toothpaste, toothbrush. Uh, they're all in here. Again, not fully packed because, you know, obviously my clothes are taken out. Oh, oh and I keep my Tilly hat in here. Uh, this one is uh, a one of a kind because it's actually been, been, um, been uh, autographed by Wes and... Uh, and by Travis, uh, Explore Adventure Moto. So 
a one of a kind tilly hat right there. Um, but yeah, and I keep all of my toiletries. So I'll pack all of my clothes in large Ziploc freezer bags. And I think I've posted a video about this before. Uh, if not on YouTube, then I've definitely done it on Instagram. Check that out, uh, Critter Moto on Instagram. Uh, but I'll put them into freezer lock Ziploc baggies and I will compress it, sit on it, and then zip it tight. So it's almost like a knockoff vacuum seal. It works really, really well. And also, uh, when you spend that long on the road and you go that many days between laundry stops, it helps keep those stinky socks to themselves. Again, compartmentalizing. So everything has its place. Are you, are, are you, are you sensing a theme here? <laughs> like, I'm nuts. Um, but yeah, so all of my toiletries, I'll keep them in a giant loop dry bag in one of these bags here. And again, it just sort of keeps everything separate and I can just simply reach in there. I know this is it and I can head off to the uh, truck stop and or whatever, you know, washroom with my toiletries and away we go. We have that. And so that's the clothing bag right there. Again, clothing so that when I'm in the camp, I know that that yellow bag just has my fresh share, my, my, my fresh pair of uh, socks and underwear. I can grab that in the morning and away we go. Everything's in its own little spot. Now, when I get to camp, uh, first thing I'll do is take off that top bag, rest it down on the picnic table if there is one or someplace dry. Uh, and then I'm at this bag here, the, the big old giant loop Tillamook bag. Now, this thing is not full. I could get a whole bunch more stuff in here, um, but I have it sit here and I mean, it's super light too. It's, it, I mean, it's big, but the contents that are in here are very light. Um, yes, the bike looks like it's overloaded, but honestly, it's not. Uh, there is, believe it or not, with all this stuff, less than 65 pounds on here. So I've got my pack kit down to 65 pounds, and uh, I could go, I could go a lot less. I really could. Um, so in here. The reason why this is all by itself is this is shelter. I keep shelter in the Tillamook bag. So in shelter, I'll get to camp. I'll open this guy. I'll take this guy off the bike. I'll open him up and I'll pack it the same way every time as well. And the first thing I'll grab is the Go Outfitters Adventure Fly. And the reason why this is on top is let's say I roll into camp and it's raining. Well, the first thing I will do is I will set this up high enough that I can set up my tent and everything. It'll help keep me out of the rain. It'll help keep that tent as dry as possible. So that guy gets set up first. Um, let's say it's not raining. Let's say it's sunny and hot, which it wasn't on the, on the Oregon adventure, but let's say I'm going camping in the summertime. Again, I'll set this thing up first because now I've got shade. So boom, 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 find a couple of trees, find a couple of sticks, away I go. Um, you know, uh, we call it, uh, one of my followers, uh, on Instagram, um, he calls my, my tarping abilities, tarp foo. So I guess I'm a black belt in tarp foo. Um, but yeah, that's it. This is a great thing. Um, the, the go outfitter, go outfitters, uh, camping shelter, apex shelter. Uh, I have a link in the description box below. Uh, check it out. Uh, very well worth the money and, uh, a really great product not sponsored. So once we have the tarp set up, the next thing on the, on the, in the bag in order would be the uh, footprint for my tent, my tent footprint. So I'll spread this out and I'll find out exactly where I want to put my tent and I'll actually lay, I'll spread it out and I'll actually lay down and, you know, just check it out, make sure it's actually as level as it seems. You want to try and sleep as level as possible. Obviously, uh, myself, I, I tend to try and find one where maybe my head's going to be just a little bit higher. Uh, I like to sleep with my head a little bit higher. And, you know, at home I have, I don't know, probably about 20 pillows that I put under my head. And uh, on, the, on the road I only have one pillow. So elevating the head helps, you know, my comfort wise just a little bit more. So this one, the, for the big Agnes, uh, will go out next. I'll set this up next. Then back into the Tillamook bag I go. The next thing I grab would be, and packed in order, would be the tent itself. And this one here is the Tiger Wall UL2 bike pack tent. This thing weighs nothing. And you can see how small it is. I could actually, if I wanted to, I could actually get it into one of these Motor Trek uh, panniers. Um, and maybe one of these camp trips, maybe I'll do that. And I'll just try and go as minimal, minimal, 
minimalist as possible. Easy for you to say. So that guy gets set up next. So picture it now. Picture this now. I have rolled into camp. I've got all my electronics in one little corner. I've got my tarp set up. I now have my footprint and my tent set up. Home set up, right? So we're good. So the next thing to come out would be my uh, air mattress. So big Agnes Q core, uh, insulated deluxe, the 25 by 78, the big guy. And uh, I'll get that going, set that up. And I do have an air pump in here, or I usually have an air pump in here. Um, I don't have it right now. I can see it. It's just on the other side of the camera. Uh, but I like to use the portable air pumps to inflate my air mattresses uh, simply because it's not the best idea to blow them up with your, with your mouth. Uh, what can happen is um, when you get your, your breath in there, your breath can actually cause it, the moisture and condensation from your exhaust uh, can cause it to, to get moldy inside. And the last thing you want is a, um, you know, kind of expensive sleeping pad getting all moldy on you. So sleeping pads all set up. Next thing to do is to get out the, uh, the big Agnes, uh, sleeping, sleeping bag. I've got it in a seat, seat of summit com compression sack. I could squish this thing down even smaller if I want. Um, I have the, uh, I really should have probably written, written this down. I'll link it in the description or I'll put it right here, uh, which uh, Big Agnes sleeping bag I have. But it's the one that, that um, basically has a sheet on the bottom, wraps around your, your air mattress and just has a top. It's, it's more like sleeping with a blanket. And uh, you know, um, it's, it's quite honestly the most comfortable sleeping bag I have ever owned in my life. I highly recommend it. Man, it good sleeps I tell you. And then, see, so that was it. That's, that's all that's in the Tillamook bag. So not very much, and it's such a big bag. If the, uh, the Rogue dry bag was just a tad bit smaller, I could probably get all of that stuff, or if the Rogue drag bag was a tad, if the Rogue dry bag was a tad bit larger, I could probably get all of that stuff into a Rogue. So maybe, uh, giant loop, hint, hint, wink, wink, suggestion suggestion maybe they could come up with a dry bag that's in between the rogue and the tillamook that would be perfect so anyways that's that now we move to this side of the uh of the gear so you can see i have two motor trek panniers on either side uh that also sport two possible pouches on the back on the back of this one uh this possible pouch is my medics possible pouch uh, it has my full uh, off-road emergency uh, first aid kit, uh, as well as, um, geez, I think at last count I had three, a little over 300 feet of paracord in there. Um, being a tarp foo master, uh, you, you can never have enough paracord. Uh, so that's just all paracord and uh, first aid gear in, in that one. And then in this side one, uh, this possible pouch, I used to carry uh, my extra fuel and I would put my fuel in uh, two of these MSR bottles and it would give, give me roughly uh, just under two liters of extra fuel. Uh, and if you watched the series, you saw that I ran out of fuel and I needed these. They came in handy. Uh, that's another thing. On a side note, if any of you viewers do attend the Giant Loop Rally, make sure you have a way of carrying extra fuel or you have quite the range on your motorcycle because fuel stops out there are few and far between. I mean, there is a gas station fairly close to the event itself, um, but between uh, basically like, geez, I think Bend and there, um, very few and far between for gas stations. Uh, my bike right now with the Acherby's tank, um, I can get 350K, uh, I'll put what that is in miles down here, uh, 350K on a full tank plus these guys gets me, you know, maybe 375. And by the time I got to Giant Loop, I filled up and bend, and by the time I got to Giant Loop, I had enough fuel to go to the gas station the next morning where I ran out of battery. Um, but yeah, so just make sure you can, you can carry a lot of fuel. So, uh, 
The MSR bottles have now been replaced um, with a armadillo bag. So I will now, will now carry an armadillo bag with me and I'll just have to figure out where I'm going to strap that guy down. Um, I forgot, I have my pillow in the, in the uh, Tillamook bag. So my little, my little Eros pillow, this thing is awesome. But back to this possible pouch. So what I carry in here now is what I used to carry up here in this uh, side pannier, um, which, is, which now ho houses my, my charging station, my jump block. So in here now, I carry my spare tube and my uh, battery powered um, air pump. So this one here is the iron and oak uh, air pump, battery powered, chargeable, comes with a nice cord. Um, I haven't had to, like I've tested it, uh, but I haven't actually had to use it out in the field yet. Um, the tests were phenomenal. Uh, Pumped up a, a basketball, no problem. I completely deflated one of my tires, pumped it back up, no problem. So a real handy little piece of kit. And uh, the battery, I'm gonna just check that out right now. Yeah, battery says full charge. And we're February, what are we? February 2nd right now. Um, it has been, the last time I charged it was end of September. So October, November, December, January, Feb. Yeah, it's been in here a little over four months and it is still at full charge. So that's pretty amazing. And uh, the literature says I will get um, 30 full tire inflations on a full charge. So I pretty much never have to worry about this thing again. Although I, you know, it would be a good idea just to double check every time before you head out on a big trip. And uh, for a tube, I always carry a front tube because you can always run the front tube in the back in a pinch. Uh, so that way it's just one tube for both tires. Heaven forbid I should have two flats. So we got that. Now we're on to the left hand side uh, pannier pocket. Or, now we're on to the left, left hand side uh, pannier. I also have my toolkit here. So I have the toolkit which weighs a fair amount. The exhaust, which is the FMF Q4, which weighs next to nothing. I got rid of the stock exhaust, saved myself probably about 10 pounds on that side. So trying to balance out the weight, this side, in this pannier, I keep my rain gear. I have the world's worst rain gear. I need to upgrade this because this is, oh, who is this? This is Boss, and it's just an overshell. Um, it, it keeps me dry for, I don't know, maybe about 30 minutes in uh, a rain. Uh, in a downpour, forget it. Might as well be in the bathtub. So we got that. And then for my rain pants, um, I was thankful to have these on the Oregon Adventure. Uh, picked these up at Cabela's. These are actually uh, winter hunting pants. Um, completely 100% waterproof. The only downside to these um, is they're bulky. I mean, they're lined, so they kept me nice and warm. It was cold. Uh, it kept me warm, kept me dry, uh, but bulky. And uh, by the time you get these on, uh, you've got your riding jacket on with your riding armor, you've got your raincoat on, you've got your backpack on, you know, you're you're basically dressed up, dressed up like Ralphie from uh, the Christmas story. And you know, you're walking around like this. So um, it's almost, although you're being dry and warm, um, you're not really being that safe because your mo mobility is so limited. Uh, so typically when I'm all geared up in all of this, uh, my riding style completely changes and I will be so timid when I'm riding with this stuff, just because reaction time is going to be, is going to be slowed down because I can't move as fast or, or I don't have as much movement, I should say. So we've got that. Um, then in here, I also had my puffy jacket and this is awesome because this, this will, will puff it. Well, you know, you know, down jackets, they will squish down and fold down to basically nothing. Right. And you just unfold them, let them loft a bit and boy, do they ever keep you nice and toasty warm. Uh, cause I mentioned, 
Um, even though I did that Oregon Washington trip in June, uh, some of those nights were pretty cold and the mornings, uh, yeah, just as cold. Um, then what else do we have in here? Last thing is my, uh, click chair, the go chair, the click chair. Uh, so this is my camp chair uh, about the size of a water bottle and, uh, it just opens up and bam, you're, you're good to go. Everything's here. It kind of opens up like an umbrella, click. Click, uh, click, click, and click. And there you go. And it holds my fat butt pretty well. So that's the chair. And that does this one side. So was this pannier uh, full? No, I could have gotten more stuff in here for sure. You'll notice that all of my bags are not stuffed to the brim. Um, so I could make it look and appear like I have, I'm carrying a lot less stuff if I just crammed everything super full. Um, but I like to keep everything, like I said, compartmentalized, everything in its own little spot. Um, yeah, so then we get to this guy here, and on this one, hopefully I'm still in frame. Let me just move this a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so then in this one here, uh, this is my kitchen. This side is my kitchen. Everything to cook, uh, everything to make a fire, all of that, it's all in this side here. And what happened on the, uh, on the trip, during the trip, um, due to supply chain, uh, normally I cook with, uh, with the jet boil and a small uh, pocket rocket stove. And uh, they all screw onto the isobutane containers. Well, when I was at um, Fort Stevens State Park, uh, I ran out of fuel. Uh, so I went and I, I must have, geez, I don't know, 20 different stores to try and find an isobutane. Uh, nothing, nada. So I had to go to Walmart and uh, I ended up getting, normally this is not in my kit, but I ended up getting one of these, one of these bad boys that screw onto, one of these bad boys. So, look at the size of this thing, right? That's massive uh, as far as like camp stoves and or, you know, backpacking camp stoves and such will go. This is, this is massive and it was in here. So, I was able to cram, was able to get that in there along with everything that I normally take. So normally, this thing is about that full. And what I have in here, there will be an addition to this, and that will be the um, Bigfoot Bushcraft Solo Burner Pack Stove, Flat Pack Stove. And I've got that over here. And that's this big here. And I'll do a video on this coming up. I'll end up cooking some steak or something on this. Uh, just because um, I've used it a lot last summer, and it's just a really cool piece of kit. It really is. I mean, you could you could have yourself a campfire right on the picnic table if you wanted to. But that will soon be coming into here. I didn't have it during my Oregon adventure. So in here, I will have a combat shovel. I will have my little axe. This little axe is nice. Um, it's it's It takes a little bit to get used to because... You know, there's not a lot of swing, uh, so it, it can be harder to break some wood, but you keep it super sharp and you be super careful and you can make it do. And then we've got a nice little bushcraft knife in here, bush knife in there. I also have um, from uh, Bigfoot Bushcraft, their survival knife, which will uh, start going on adventures with me. It was actually, I brought it with, my, with me on my last camp trip of last year. That video is up and that's the one where I, my, my mind ran away on me and I got totally scared of bears. Uh, I don't know why, but anyways, back to this bag. I then have my Get Lost Go Ride. This is the Ride to Food uh, branded mug and in it I will keep my coffee. And in here I've got a nice Brazilian dark roast coffee in there. Yum, yum, yum. And my main uh, source of cooking is the jet boil here. Um, so, you know, boil water, boil in the bags. Uh, I will, you know, cube up some steak and peppers. I'll fry them in this thing. Um, I tend to use this thing, uh, a lot more than anything else. Uh, however, 
Um, the one downside to this one, this is this is an older model. I think they've they've fixed it on the newer ones. Don't quote me. Um, but the one downside to this is being able to regulate the flame. Uh, you pretty much have um, like uh, solar surface hot, or you have nothing at all. Uh, so when when you're actually cooking inside of this, if you're trying to cook a, a cream pasta or something like that, you've got to be fast. You've got to be stirring, and you've got to like constantly move it otherwise you're going to burn the the bejesus out of it but it's a great stove i'm really happy with that then what else do we have oh we got the uh the cheapy fiskers bush knife this works pretty well uh, always have that in there um a lot of these items too uh they'll be like like um constant carries i will because i always ride um my bike with the with the motor treks on and uh, when, even when I'm going for a day trip here on the island off dual sporing, I'll carry all of my kitchen stuff there um, al as long, along with uh, a snack if I want. Because um, quite often I'll go for a ride and I'll come to a beautiful vista and I'll stop and I'll make a cup of coffee. And if I happen to have some food, maybe I'll have a little lunch. I'll do some, some roadside cooking. And uh, uh, based on the... Uh, response of my camp cooking with critter video series um, I'm gonna start filming more of those recipes for you guys so stay tuned for that spoiler alert uh, we'll have some more camp cooking with critter videos coming this year uh, so yeah anyways we've got that back to what's in here I uh, have my long spoon you need one of these for those boil in the bag meals yum 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 then uh, I'll carry a large isobutane uh, you can also get a small isobutane inside of here. Uh, I actually have one in here now. Um, but I had the big one and a small one on my trip. Um, bear in mind, they both were not brand new. They were previously used. That's, I think that was on me. Uh, that's my fault. I probably should have brought a brand new one. I likely wouldn't have run out. Because uh, what do they say here? Uh, this full one... I should have 100, 100 boils in here, 108 boils. And uh, there's no way uh, during that 21 days that I cooked 108 meals uh, to be able to go through one of these and a small one. So food for thought for myself, mental note for myself. Next time, bring a brand new container. Uh, what else do we have in here? Then we have my uh, knife set. So GSI Outdoors knife set. Pretty impressed with this. Uh, this here, I have some more uh, utensils. I have three sets of knives in here. Uh, super sharp and have stayed super sharp. I've had this for, I want to say two and a half years now. I have not sharpened a knife since uh, or yet. Uh, they're still as sharp as sharp as they were the day I bought them. And it comes with a really great, easy, clean, foldable cutting board in there. So that's pretty nice because a lot of times, you know, uh, you get to a camp and... Uh, if there is a picnic table, it could be filthy and covered in bird poo or who knows. You don't want to cut anything on that, right? So you've got your cutting board here. Uh, it's also nice when you're out in the bush. Uh, you just you can just lay it right down on the ground. You've got a nice flat work surface to work on. So handy, handy, handy. I enjoy having that. Um, you know, a lot a lot of the, the forums that I, motor camping forums and stuff, people are like, oh, what do you need a cutting board for? Rah, 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 rah. Too much kitchen stuff. Rah, rah, rah. You know, and to each their own. For me, um, the reason why I have so much cooking stuff is because I love to cook. Uh, I love to eat, <laughs> you know. Um, almost as much as I like to ride, I love to cook. And for me, uh, when I'm riding and I get to camp, uh, there's something there's something about arriving at camp and, and just going through the, the motion of setting up the tarp, setting up the tent, setting up the sleeping bag, going out and pick... On, packing the cook the kitchen, getting a fire going, getting back to cooking the fire or cooking your meal and then sitting down in front of the fire. Something about that whole routine, I'll pretty much do that in that order every time, uh, is just so relaxing, so therapeutic, so whatever it is, it's just, it just feels so comfortable and I will just do that. Um, but yeah, I guess I got off on a tangent. But that's why cooking stuff is so important to me. Uh, what else? Oh yeah. And lastly, uh, pot kit. I could definitely get a smaller pot kit. Uh, this is GSI. 
Um, I was looking at the Sea to Summit, uh, the collapsible silicone ones that all, everyone else seems to use. Um, when I started this kit, those weren't available to me here on the island. I could not find them anywhere. Um, and then when I went and looked online, they always seemed to be sold out where I couldn't find the exact combination that I wanted. And if I built a combination, it just was outrageously expensive. So, uh, pick this up here again at, uh, Cabela's, my local Cabela's, um, everything's aluminum. Uh, it's a pretty good little kit. Uh, pretty happy with the frying pan. The frying pan's big enough to cook a, you know, a good sized steak on there, bacon and eggs. Uh, it was supposed to be non-stick, but you can see there's a little bit of pitting and scoring here. So the non-stick is not so, not so great, but I mean, we're not supposed to be eating off non-stick anyways. Like it's not good for you or whatever. Uh, then you come with a lid for your pot and the pot holds everything else. There's two other cups will come with this, uh, one without a liner and then one with a liner for hot hot beverages. Uh, I basically just use my cups as storage vessels. Uh, they'll store things. Uh, in here I have a whole bunch of tinder and then this one here is just my little uh, pocket rocket stove um, which I will use when I need to cook things uh, where I need to. It's not an actual pocket rocket, I just say that. Uh, I forget what brand it is. But you know, it's just a simple type, screws right on top of the isobutane. Uh, but this one uh, works really, really well at regulating that temperature. Um, so I can do a nice low simmer or I can do a super high scold if I have to, whatever. Depending on what I'm cooking, I'll, uh, I'll use that. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell, I think. Let me see, anything else in there? Nope, and that's that. So as you can see in closing, these bags were not stuffed to the rim. Um, so yes, I could get a whole lot more stuff on this motorcycle. Do I need a whole lot more stuff? Uh, no, no, I, I had, I had more than I need, more than I needed for this trip. Um, anything I would pare down, uh, for this trip? Yes. Uh, definitely. Uh, like I said, I need to find, uh, a better rain gear solution, uh, one that doesn't take up so much room, uh, whether that means I buy, uh, you know, a riding outfit like the new MSR that's 100% waterproof or, or something like that. Uh, I need to find a solution for that. Uh, it's unfortunate that um, all the solutions seem to cost a lot of money. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, definitely don't need to take as many freeze dried meals. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I didn't need to pack as many as many shirts um, because it turns out at the PNW opener I bought a shirt or sorry I won a shirt uh, actually I won two shirts <laughs> at the PNW opener uh, then at uh, Giant Loop event um, I picked up a, uh, uh, a Veterans Back 40 t-shirt as well as a Giant Loop t-shirt was included so uh, there's four t-shirts right there um, I I think I packed uh, six for the trip. So I had 10 t-shirts. Like I, I didn't need that many. Uh, so this time when I go down, I think I'll only pack maybe two t-shirts and end up because I typically always buy a t-shirt when I'm there or, or like giant loop, they'll be giving away a Jersey. So we'll have that. Um, what else, anything else I could have pared down? Uh, I'm not sure. If you think I could leave a comment, drop a comment down below. Um, yeah, if you uh, have any thoughts or suggestions on how maybe I could streamline this a little bit more or anything like that, any thoughts, comments in general, I don't care. Yeah, just leave them down below. I, uh, I enjoy interacting with all of you. Um, I do, as you may have noticed, I reply to every single comment. So uh, your views and your comments are import important to me. Uh, I appreciate you being here. And now that I have the bike pretty much um, unpacked, uh, I think I'm going to go for a ride. <laughs> February 2nd and I'm itching to get out there. It's raining right now, but uh, you know, a little wind therapy, even if it's just around the block a couple of times, does a body good. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Uh, I tried to do this all in one take aside from the close up uh, for the tank bag. Everything else has been in, uh, tried one take, uh, probably going to edit out, out a couple of stumbles, but um, yeah, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Chris, this is Critter Moto. Uh, if you like what you saw, please like, 
subscribe, no, it's subscribe, like, comment. I think that's where they are on the screen. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Till next time, let's get out and ride.